Well, congregation uh, and everyone else who is watching, uh, you have heard already the theme verse for Gem Sunday today, and uh, it is all about how we are loved, period. We are loved by God, period. Full stop. There's no, uh, there's no strings attached. There's no, uh, there's no caveats. There's no uh, things we need to worry about. Particularly, God just loves us. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that we don't need to behave well. Just like our parents love us, girls, and I'm speaking to you, gems, but also to all of us. Just like our parents love us, no matter what we do, if we are blessed to have parents like that, um, that doesn't mean that they are okay with us doing bad things, or that they'll let us get away with doing bad things. It just means that the love that our Heavenly Father has for us will never stop. It will never go away. We are loved no matter what. And, and the reality of that is that it has implications for us. And the Bible lays out some of those implications. And throughout this year, when the gems were able to get together, uh, one of the things that they may have talked about, one of the things that is part of their theme is our identity. What the Bible says about who who we are as we have accepted Christ. Now, he, he, this is something important to know. And, and there's, no, there's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. Before we have accepted Jesus, there are some realities that are true about us. We are still loved. God reaches out to us and longs to give us all that we need. He loves us desperately. And I know that sometimes it doesn't feel that way. Sometimes it feels precisely the opposite. But nonetheless, it is true. God loves us us. Every human being that ever has been or ever will be or is today, God loves us. And, and through all of the circumstances of our lives, through everything that he sends our way, uh, whether it's good, bad, or ugly, God is trying to draw us to himself. But he doesn't force us he doesn't force us. It's not like the Crusades back long ago where someone would stand there with a sword at your neck and say, hey, look, convert, become a Christian, or else. That's not how it is. God instead pursues us lovingly through all the pathways of our life. And he longs to give us salvation. And, and, and salvation means not only do we have the opportunity to live with God forever after we die and, and we, we live again uh, through the power of Jesus who conquered death, but it also means that here today, if we have accepted Jesus, his Holy Spirit comes to live within us. And, and that Holy Spirit works within us to refine us like the finest gold, the Bible tells us. Better than gold. And so we have hope for today and tomorrow as Christ followers, as folks who have accepted Jesus. And it's, it's no credit to us that we have accepted Jesus. It's not like we can look around and say, hey, look how much better we are than other people because we accepted Jesus. No, it's not like that at all. God's gift to us is totally given out of grace and not out of deserving. God gives us his love and his salvation freely. And, and some people may ask, well, why do I have to accept Jesus then? If it's so, f if it's so free, if it's, there's no conditions, why do I have to accept Jesus? 
Well, that's because Jesus is really the only one who's offering. If you look at all the other religions of the world, um, as, as wonderful as, as many of their teachings are, in the end, the reality is that with other religions, you have to earn your way to being saved. You have to earn your way into paradise. As far as I know, Christianity is the only religion that recognizes fully that human beings are so broken without God that we cannot earn our way into God's favor. That there is no way for us to be good enough because God's standard is perfection. And that's what he created us as, and that is the minimum that he requires of us. Absolute perfection. And he doesn't mean uh, perfection as in you never get your math problems wrong. He means perfection as in moral perfection. You only always do and think and feel the right, holy, good, perfect things. You are living in constant loving relationship with God, with yourself and other humans, and with this creation that he has given us. That is what God requires of us, and yet God recognizes that we can't do it. None of us can. The Bible says very clearly that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You, me, everyone. No one can do it on their own. And so Jesus, Jesus comes to earth and just, just as we saw an Easter, just like last week, Jesus comes and he lives among us and he, be, he, he, he is a human being, but he's also God. And he lives a perfect life, the life that none of us could live on our own. And, and he dies for us on the cross and then he is raised from the dead because death cannot hold him because he is perfect. He is the only human being who has ever been perfect or ever will be on this earth. And so Jesus, because he is the only one to have conquered sin and death in this way, uh, he is the one who stands there and offers the gift to us. The reason there is no other way, the reason that, that going through Allah or going through uh, the teachings of, of the Buddha or going through uh, Shinto or going through any other religion, the reason that that won't work is because no one there is offering grace in the way that Jesus does. Jesus is the one, only, true Son of God. And because of that, he is the only one who can offer a way to the Father. And so if we have accepted that gift, and it doesn't, it doesn't take much, it's just a thank you. If we have accepted that gift of salvation, then there are certain realities that come to be true about us. And we're going to go through some of those. First of all, uh, the reality is that we are accepted. Because of Jesus Christ, we are accepted. This is what Romans chapter 15 verse 7 says. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to to God, just as Christ accepted you. You've been accepted by God, not because of anything great that you, have, you or I have done, but because he just does. He holds that out. He says, accept my gift, and I accept you. You are beautiful. 
you are beautiful. And, and this is true whether you are a male or female, young or old, whether you, you, you have people in your past or present who rave about your physical beauty or what. All of that is irrelevant. But instead, the Bible declares that we are beautiful because of who God made us to be. You are altogether beautiful, my darling, God says to us in Song of Songs 4, verse 7. You are altogether beautiful, my darling. There is no flaw in you. You are chosen. You are chosen. You see, our, our brokenness is so big that in and of ourselves, by ourselves, we cannot choose God. God needs to pursue us and chase us and woo us with his love. John 15 verse 16 says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. You are delighted in. This is what Psalm 18, verse 19 says. He brought me, this is God, he brought me into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. You may not have very many people in your life who, who you would say delight in you. But God does. God delights in you. He looks at you and he sees you and he knows you better than anyone else could ever do. And he doesn't look at you and turn away in shame. He doesn't look at you and turn away uh, in rejection. He looks at you and he says, oh, my beautiful daughter, oh, my beautiful son, I am so glad you are who you are. God also says that we are enough. Uh, not that we in ourselves apart from God are enough, but enough, but rather that because of God we are enough. This is what 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. We have everything we need. We have enough. We don't need to be better in order to earn his favor. Instead, we get to, because of the tools he has given us, we get to grow. We get to grow. We have everything we need. We are free, the Bible says. And it is Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, that says, It is for freedom that God has set us free, that Christ has set us free, excuse me. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. God doesn't want a bunch of robots who obey him because that's the only thing they can do. God wants people who freely and willingly love him in return for the love that he has given us. Who love him and who will obey him, not because we have to, but because we get to. We are free. We are gifted. And you may notice that this is going alphabetically. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. This is part of the wonderful love and life that we have been given. We have been given gifts to give and use for others in the kingdom. We are heaven-bound, H, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, Philippians 3, verse 20. We are heaven-bound. We are important, not because we're so much better than anybody else. We are important because of God's love for us, God's 
the love that we have that is undeserved. We don't deserve it, but nonetheless, he gives it to us. We are important. And even Matthew 10, verse 30 to 31, Jesus says, And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered, so don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. You are a jewel. They will sparkle in his land like jewels in a crown, God says of his people. In Zechariah 9, verse 16, we are jewels in God's crown. <laughs> you are known. We are known by God. Psalm 139, verses 1 to 2 says, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You are loved, period. You are loved. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Can you imagine that? We are not just People in this huge universe, tiny gnats sitting on the earth's surface, we are God's children. And again, not because we were so great on our own, but because he just loves us that much. We are God's masterpiece. Can you imagine that? You are a greater masterpiece than the Mona Lisa or uh, Van Gogh's Starry Night. You are a masterpiece. Ephesians 2 verse 10 says, For we are God's masterpiece. We are a new creation. We are no longer like we were. That undeserving wretch that we were before Christ's salvation, that's no longer us. Again, not because we have made ourselves so great, but because Christ has come. And he is renewing us. This is what 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. If you have accepted that gift of salvation from Jesus that he offers out with no strings attached and no requirements other than acceptance, if you have accepted that, then you are a new creation. Oh, overcomer. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, that is, the enemies, the powers and principalities, Satan, sin, death, all those things. You have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. He protected. You are protected. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 3. Now, that doesn't mean that bad things won't happen to you, and it doesn't mean that, that you won't ever die physically in this world. It doesn't mean that you won't get sick from COVID-19. It doesn't mean that you won't face financial troubles or anything like that. That's not what that means. It means that ultimately God will protect you from Satan, and God will protect you and bring you into his kingdom more and more each and every day. The Bible says to us that God will work all things to the good of those who love him. That even the bad things that happen to us will somehow work out for us. To grow us into maturity in Christ so that we can live more and more like the sons and daughters of God that we are. You are qualified, Q. Qualified, again, not because of what we have done, but because God gives us the qualifications we need through Jesus Christ. And giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share 
in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. Colossians 1 verse 12. Rescued. You are rescued. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Colossians 1, verse 13 and 14. And you are strong. Gems, girls, you may not feel strong, Many of us may not feel strong in this day and age when COVID-19 stalks the land. But through Christ, you are strong. Joshua 1 verse 9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Everywhere you go, brothers and sisters, God is with you. You are a temple, T. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we don't worship when we get together at the church building. We're not, that's not a temple. That's just a building. A nice building, but it's just a building. You are the temple. Do you not know, Paul says to us in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Jesus bought us from slavery into freedom. He bought us with his death on the cross. You are unique. You. You are unique. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb, says Psalm 139, verse 13. V, you are victorious. We read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57, But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You are washed. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. And that indeed is what Christ has done. And that is what the psalmist talks about in Psalm 57 verse, 51, verse 7. You are an example, X, the second letter. You are an example in everything. Set them an example by doing what is good. Titus chapter 2, verse 7. You have the opportunity to show the world what it means to be a son or daughter of God. You, gems, are young but able. 1 Timothy, uh, Paul talks to Timothy, who is a young believer in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, and says to him and to you, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. And last but not least, you are zealous. Zed. Never be lacking in zeal. That's enthusiasm and passion and, and willingness to serve God. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Romans 12, verse 11. That's the A to Z of our identity in Christ, brothers and sisters. And I hope it is encouraging to you. There is also a challenge and opportunity for you. And I'm going to let, uh, I'm going to let the video that comes from the GEMS uh, people uh, speak 
to you about a challenge, an opportunity for you for this week to live into this truth of this identity. I, I've also uh, included a link to download the, a document that has your A to Z identity that the gems have put together for us from the Bible. And so you can download it because this is, this is a whirlwind. It is too much to take in and really absorb. I would really encourage you to check out some of the links on the playlist for this week's service because they include a coloring page and a, a, a list of our identity in Christ and other opportunities. So please check that out and don't forget who you are. Thank you so much, girls, for having Gem Sunday again this year. Blessings to you and to all of us. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so very much for this day. Thank you so very much for your word to us in scriptures, for who we are based on what you have done for us. Oh God, you are great and good. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.